Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hold up just a little bit. Okay, yeah, we're on. <laughs> okay, welcome to the sewing room of Garner. Um, today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to make the um, underlayered gathered skirt for the mal inspired dress that I make on my Etsy shop. Um, yesterday, I went through and how to make the skirt, how to put things together, but I ran out of time, so I wasn't able to actually show you how I do the tool gathering of the skirt. So I'm going to show you that today. Um, three different methods on how I use um, to actually make the gathered skirt. So this is what I'm talking about. Like this gets connected to the connecting piece that goes to the waistband. So I'm going to show you the three different methods that I use to um, make the gathered skirt underneath. So this is four layers of tulle. Um, and it's pretty dense, but if you really wanted something that was like just the tool for the skirt, you're going to need a lot more layers. Um, and one day I'll go through that as well. So everything's set up here in my new studio. So um, it's, it's it's a little bit more friendlier for me to actually have my, my stuff set up and I have to take it up and down constantly when I'm doing classes. Because in the back I have all of my stuff for the classes. So all of the stations and everything is set up in the back. And then I have my own like, private studio in the front office. Um, so that works really well. Okay, so now we're going to point down towards the Sierra. I need you to help me point it down, remember? <laughs> she gets so distracted by books. <laughs> um, I'm going to have you actually point right down here. Down, down, down. I got my mask still on. Down, down. Perfect. Okay. That's it. Okay. Um, I want you guys to focus right here where my hands are because I'm going to show you more of what's going on under the pressure today. So I have my bolt of tool. Uh, with my dress, I had either different shades of purple or purple and a black, um, or just the two different shades of purple. So it just depends on pretty much the look I'm going for at that point in time. Um, not, not two dresses are exactly the same. That's the great part about it is sometimes there's short versions, there's long versions, there's ones that have the longer layers of the um, peplum, shorter peplum, all that kind of stuff. So it's kind of like depends on the size more than anything else because the size helps me determine what size we're doing. So for the short version of the dress, I fold this in half. And literally what I do is I just undo a bunch and then I put it on my lap. I'll show you what I do with it now. Now what I do is I take the folded edge and bring it toward well, you can't see it right here, but there we go. I took, I folded it. So down here's the little pieces of <laughs> um, thread and everything get caught up on the tool. So if you ever need to have a, a vacuum, tool will be a vacuum for you. Everything gets stuck to the tool. Fold it in half and get yourself a good amount nice and folded in half. Just like that. Now, we don't have to do the entire amount. That's not what we're looking for. Just a rough. It doesn't have to be perfect. The great thing about this dress, female inspired dress, is that it doesn't have to be perfect. The more rustic, the better, I think. Okay, so I'm going to start off with my stitch. With my stitches, I'm going to back stitch a little bit just to kind of make an um, attack. The first method I'm going to show you is I'm going to take the fabric and I'm going to pleat it and pleat it and pleat it, and pleat it. And that's how it's gonna go underneath the presser foot. So it's gonna be more of a pleated um, style of a gather. And I'm just taking my hands and doing exactly what I just showed you over here, just under the presser foot. Literally just go like that. It was funny because I actually did this tutorial this morning um, <laughs> and a couple of things happened. First thing happened, um, I didn't have any sound. I didn't even notice I didn't have any sound. You know, I should probably check if there's sound now. Sierra, can you check to see if there's sound? No, no can you log on? On oh, no, my phone or something? I don't know if I even have that here. I don't know how to check my sound settings. 
gonna check right now. The chat is on right now and I see that, that one person's on, that might just be me. But if you can check to see if the sound is on, that would be great because I would hate to have to do this all over again and there's no sound. Go ahead and do this while we wait for the other day. So, in case we do have sound, the first thing was I had no sound. Second thing happened, my daughter calls me. And is asking me where the cream cheese is <laughs> so she can eat breakfast. She FaceTimed me while I was live to ask me, Mom, where's the cream cheese? I'm saying, okay. Never a dull moment. Completely unscripted. Okay, can you see me? Can I hear myself? Maybe? Yes. Perfect. <laughs> Good, we do have volume. So I was so scared of. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and take some more and unravel it on myself. So this is the first way to do it right here. This is the first way to actually take it and pleat it all the way. Now, the other method that I have is taking it and like squishing it underneath. And what I mean by squishing, I mean I literally, I'm literally, all I'm doing is just really getting it nice and tight and almost like scrunched up in there. All I'm doing is just kind of getting as much as I can under the presser foot and just continue to do that. You want to make sure you're staying um, as much as on the fold as you can. on the fold as much as you can. And I'm literally just scrunching it all up. I'm just squishing it all up underneath the... Squishing, 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 getting it as squished in there as possible. Okay, so that's the other way that I do it. So it's, it's a lot more dense like this. And so I do like that method because I don't have to worry about having to be as precise with plates. So just kind of squishing it under there. This is what I do. You see all this flapping I'm doing? That's actually me um, unrolling more tool. Okay, put it in half. Put it in half. I've been making this dress on, on Etsy for years now. I think this is the third year that I'm going on that I've been making this dress. Okay, so that's, this is the dress pleated. I'm sorry, dress, this is the underskirt. This is the pleated version. This is like the really just scrunching it underneath the presser foot method. And then now I'm going to show you how I do it um, with just a gather stitch. I'm going to extend my stitch length as long as I can and just run it through. Keep it as well as I can in half. Doesn't have to be perfect, like I said, but just kind of close. Run that gather stitch all the way down the length of the long area. I'm just gonna do a good amount of this right now. I'll show you how quickly it kind of comes together. So each method kind of goes pretty fast if you're pretty quick about it. There's pros and cons to each method. 
I'm going to go ahead and cut off. Right here, I'm going to cut it off. And then I'll show you what happens. I would say that the gather method, you kind of need a chunk that's pre-cut out kind of because um, you don't want to have to continue to unravel because it goes much faster. But then you don't know how much is pleated. That's the only problem. When you're gathering it, you don't know what kind of volume you're looking for. So I try to do like three times the length of what I'm looking for. So if I need a 26 inch piece of um, tool to go around, then I'm looking at doing some about 80, 80 inches, 86 inches, sometimes even 100 inches to really make sure it's nice and gathered. Okay, so on here, I have my bobbin thread is red. My top spool thread right here is purple. I like to have the two different colors because it helps me um, pull the right one. So I, most of the time I tell you to, to pull from the bobbin thread because it's a looser um, stitch, so it's easier to pull. So I'm just gonna take my red thread and I'm gonna just scrunch it. And then you want to move that gather down. You don't want it to have it just all stay right there. You're going to have to move that down. Just move it down. So take it and start it here and move it down. The only bad thing I don't like about this, the gather, one of the cons to the Down so you can see. Okay, and continuing to pull it down. This is a lot harder when you have thicker fabric. When you have thicker fabric, I always recommend you do two gather stitches parallel to each other. Make sure they do not cross over each other, or else you're gonna have to start over because it's just not gonna work. Okay, so there's my gather stitch. Once I've got it good and cut together, nice and thick like that, is that pretty? I take my um, scissors, I cut off the excess. Woo. I cut off my excess and throw it away. And then I take it and I'm gonna tie it. I'm gonna just do a quick tie. So here it is gathered. So we'll look at the differences here. So from right here to right here is gathered and you can move the gather and move it around if you need to. If it's a little too dense in some areas, you can kind of move it around. So that's good there. Um, and here is the hand scrunched one underneath the presser foot. And look at that. For less time than it took me to actually gather this one, because it's actually a process of slowly gathering without popping stitches. I did this here, and it's really dense. Um, right here is kind of dense, too. And then here is the pleated version. See how it's nice and pleated? I like this version. This version here of the pleated style, for me, works with the maldress because I'm able to do the multi-layers at one time. Because if you go and do this, plus two more on top of this, with how dense it is right here when you scrunch it, you can't attach it to the, um, the connector piece as well as if it were like this. So if you're trying to do a skirt and you're not worried about it connecting to something and you're just putting it like an elastic, then the scrunch version is fine. But... Over here is my method. I like this method better. But if I'm running kind of like short in time, I just want to scrunch a bunch of stuff together, I could do it this way too. So that's the different ways we do it. We got the pleated version, the scrunched under the presser foot version, and then the gathered version right here. That's just the gathered stitch. And you pull on the stitch and it gathers together. Okay, so that is it for today. I, um, that was probably part of the one that was the, oh, the other version. Okay, so 
If you want um, more details on this or another type of gathered skirt, put it in the comments below and I'll do my best to get it out there for you guys. I'm going to be trying to get a, at least one video out a week um, and then maybe do a live Wednesday night or something like that while the kids sewing class is going on um, because I have an instructor for that that I could be here and making a video while that's happening. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. Learned something new today. Give it a thumbs up, comment, like, all that good stuff, and I'll see you guys next time. I'm going to have to edit.